My name is Kristen Drake, and I am the clinical director for the Advance 2 clinical trial looking at deep brain stimulation for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. Um, and I am talking today with Christy and Don Talbot. Um, I will let them get into their story, but just really briefly, Don was involved um, as a patient in our first advanced study. And um, so I want to start out, Christy, by uh, asking you to um, kind of briefly walk me through your family's journey with Alzheimer's disease. Sure. Uh, back in, I guess it was 2004, uh, Don was working a full-time job and he also enjoyed playing uh, music both professionally and for our our church uh, band that we had in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started noticing at that time that he was messing up. He was forgetting lyrics. He was missing uh, notes while he was playing. And I knew something was seriously wrong because Don could play music by ear and he's just so talented. And uh, it wasn't just that, but we also noticed things he was currently driving a motorcycle to work and he would come home and say he forgot things like when he stopped, he would forget to put his feet down. And so that's a big deal when you start forgetting things like that. So I got an appointment for Don at our neurologist and I told him there's, there's something wrong, I just know it. And it took about two years. Uh, when Don was 41, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I was not one to want to accept that. So of course I went looking for uh, a second opinion. And that sort of started our journey with Alzheimer's and what we needed to do. So on that journey, um, you did a lot of homework, as you just said. What kind of treatments have you tried? We started off first learning about what the treatments are, and the doctor started Don on Aricep right away. Uh, I would, after studying about the different things that they could do for the disease, I found out that these are not long-term treatments, and they really don't slow the progression, and there's no chance of cure with these options. So we went on Aricet, then uh, later on Namenda was added, and that's when I started realizing that we needed to get involved with research and trials. And that's when we uh, ended up at John Hopkins and we started with two drug trials. And I also did a caregiver studies. I did two of those. And that helped us along our path to ultimately get to the DBS research, which we feel has changed his course of the disease. Oh, that's great. So Don, um, you had surgery in May of 2013. Um, that was just about eight years ago. How are you feeling now? I feel uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Every day is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I try not to take any of it for granted. And But physically, I feel fine. <laughs> you know, the only thing that stops me is is this up here mm -hmm. and you know there's a lot of things that i want to do you know i really do and i know my body could do it but for some reason the faculties are just not there to to complete it there have been a lot of pharmaceutical studies run over the past 10 plus years since your diagnosis what made you decide to join the advanced study i mean it's brain surgery um, and that's quite intimidating, I know, to a lot of people. What made you choose this study? I believe I shouldn't even really be putting that out there why I'm, why I'm doing it. But I think it's important this time so there's others that'll pick the ball up too. You know, one voice, that's just a spark, but it could, it could turn into a flame. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope happens. That's really what I hope happens. But I know this DBS was, it's the only reason I'm talking to you right it now. It is. Yeah, when his battery dies, and we've been through that twice now, I start noticing that he's not talking as much, that he's extremely quiet and withdrawn. 
And uh, at one point, one of the batteries had died at the three year mark. And we were told that they should last around three to five years. And at that three year mark, I'm thinking, well, it's too soon. And we, but I was seeing it over and over again with him withdrawing and just communicating less. And we had it checked out and indeed the battery was dying. So I know it's working. I, I have proof it's working. Oh, I could feel it. Right. I could feel it when they turned it on. Really? Oh, yeah. What is oh. that feeling like? Can you describe it? For some reason, everything around you looks just a little bit dim. less dim, just a little bit dimmer than mm. everything else around. And I think that has a lot to do with our physiology physicality because I think as as we mope around our eyes kind of droop we look you know but for some reason when this thing turned on my eyes opened up they did the lights came on it was like wow wow and it was just a comfort and it was just a, like I had just taken that big deep breath that I had been longing for for so long yeah. and that's the only way I can describe it it was it was wonderful and also you have to remember that Don was diagnosed at 41 and he's getting ready to turn 56 mm -hmm. so he's had this disease a long time and what you see now is not what I'm going to see as soon as we're done with this mm -hmm. interview He's I'll gonna shut down, he'll be tired, mm -hmm. but because of that DBS, <clears throat> he is able to communicate that to me, that he yeah. just needs to be in a quiet space and you know, not having any outside interference. Without the DBS on, he's not able to communicate that with me. Mm -hmm. So it, for me, it's peace of mind knowing that he can still communicate how he's feeling and what's going on with him. I want to step back in time a minute and ask Don, do you remember the surgery itself? I do. What do you remember about I it? Do. Uh, the first thing I remember was they came in the room first and they put the halo on your head, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which that wasn't bad. I mean, that wasn't bad at all. Then I just remember them talking and pulling and pushing on my head. And then uh, all of a sudden I heard crunch, 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 crunch. And he had a hand <laughs> auger and it was, and it was drilling into my skull. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you didn't feel it though. Didn't feel it. You didn't feel anything. You don't have any, you don't have any sensors pain sensors mm -hmm. in your in your brain so uh they put everything in and i was awake for that part because they had to talk to me the whole time mm -hmm. to make sure i was doing okay then once they got all that in place uh they pushed the wire underneath my skin all the way down my neck and there's a connector behind my ear and then there's a piece that goes from here and you can see it, mm -hmm. that wire there goes down to the battery in my chest, but they put you out for that part. They kept you awake for this and put you out for that. And, and he did really well. I mean, I was, I was yeah. fine. It was, he didn't have anything negative to say about the mm -hmm. procedure. So no. that was good. So the testing um, that you went through for the study. Uh, there's a lot of it. Um, how how was that f experience for you? Was it tiring? Was it difficult? For the DBS testing initially, mm -hmm. he, he wasn't bothered by it at all because no. he really wanted to be involved in this study. We made it kind of a date uh, because we came, you know, on different, different days. Mm -hmm. And so our drive was a little bit longer. I mean, mm -hmm. it took us what, what, three hours? Three, takes four hours. three, three and a half hours to get to Baltimore from mm -hmm. here. So we just made it a date day. Mm -hmm. So we would go up and that was just ended up being the minor part of the day. And the rest of yeah. the day was getting something to eat yeah. and doing something like that. Some days he did great. 
Other days, he was mad because they didn't want to give him anything to eat, you know, during testing. And so with Alzheimer's, you just have to sit back take the test, remember why you're there. And yes, it's a lot of testing, but they wanna make sure you're a good candidate, that you are able to withstand the surgery, that to make sure you're gonna be safe. And so he did the oh, testing. Maybe, some maybe days were, some days were good, some days, you know, he, it was a little more stressful for him, but he knew in the end it was for a good cause. And I think that's what kept him going. One of the important parts to this as well is they told Don over and over again, if you ever get to the point where you think it's too much and you can't handle it, you don't have to go through with it. You can stop even up to the day of surgery. You can stop being wheeled into surgery. You, I do remember, you have that option and that's always comforting. I do remember the doctor asking me, I think before uh, I got the surgery, because my neck was hurting, mm -hmm. he said, are you sure you want to continue? I said, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not leaving now. <laughs> you know, I got this thing bolted to my head. So I'm not Just go for it, it, right? <laughs> During the testing of the leads, they go at different levels. Mm -hmm. um, the FDA will only allow you at a certain level. But at the higher numbers also, he was really able to remember things that I thought he had forgotten. And it just proved to me, unfortunately, with Alzheimer's, those memories are still there. They're all there. The problem is you lose the connection to get to them. And the DBS showed us that if we can rewire that connection somehow, the memories are still there. So it's very interesting and exciting uh, thing to have happen. And even you were thrilled at the fact that you were remembering things that you had long forgot. Oh yeah. Yeah. When he turned it, <clears throat> when he turned it up real high, I was almost transported one time to being a little kid in the mm -hmm. house that I, I was way back and I knew all my friends. I mean, and in the I middle, I could just look around and I could see that it, yeah. it was almost like a three dimensional thing. And, uh, and I was thinking was to myself, is he serious? And then in the middle of Don explaining where he was and what he was remembering, he stopped and he was like, what are we doing? What's going on? And the fella that had the device that turned it on, turned it up, turned it down, had actually turned the device off in the middle of Don telling the story. And as soon as he did that, Don's memory stopped. Yeah. Wow. And so it really, and he had it under the table. So we didn't know he had done anything. I, it was incredible to see. So we know it works. Yeah. And um, it, it's impressive. It's impressive indeed. Yeah. Oh. And as the years pass with Don's diagnosis, he's able to do less and less. Mm -hmm. um, so we adjust for that. Yeah, we don't, we don't try to hide it from anybody. I mean, yeah. well, Don's at the point now where he really can't hide it. Yeah, anymore. I can't hide it. But... Like, you'll know when he's done you'll know what he wants to do and what he doesn't want to do. But again, that sort of takes me back to the DBS because without the DBS, he wouldn't be communicating those things. We would just be getting his behaviors and not necessarily when he's able to talk about yeah, it, you... conversation. As you've said, because of the DBS system, you're still able to communicate those yes. feelings, that sensation of I'm overwhelmed. I'm frustrated. My anxiety is going up to Christy. So you're able to, as best as possible, given the moment, manage that. So she knows you're feeling overwhelmed. And uh, so the communication is key in that. And so the system you firmly believe has allowed you to maintain that. Absolutely. Yes. Now, That's, that is the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. The The DBS has continued to allow Don to communicate. Uh, he still has Alzheimer's. So when he's really shutting down from the stresses of life, even though he's able to think to himself, too much is going on. Kate, you know, he might forget to communicate that to me. But if I slow him down, and ask him what's going on, what's bothering you, that DBS is there to 
to help him communicate at that time where I may have to ask him questions to get the answers I'm looking for. But we've been living with this disease for so long, I sort of can read him. If you were to be in a room with someone who's considering coming into the new study, what would you say to them? What, what advice would you have for them? There's going to be a special reason that you want to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not just, um, we know it's not a cure. So I think there's a good chance that you'll have more positives than mm -hmm. negatives out of it, no matter who you are, no matter, no matter what, um, don't, don't do it unless you're doing it for yourself yeah. and others. That's what I would, I would say. I would look at it if it were my decision, whether or not I was getting DBS or not, I would look at the pros and the cons. We know what the cons are with Alzheimer's disease. You know, little by little, your, your brain will be like, it's like an onion and you're peeling, the, the disease is peeling layers back one by one until you get down to the only thing that's left is that core of the onion. And why would you not want to seriously uh, think about maybe slowing that process down mm -hmm. or even stopping that process? And in the meantime, the DBS is, uh, it, it gives you a couple things. It gives you a better quality of life and it gives you that ability to complete your thoughts. Whereas without the DBS, in Don's situation, those thoughts were just getting all scrambled up. And the DBS helped him keep his thoughts straight and also gave him, in his situation, the ability to keep communicating. And we have proof of that when the batteries have died and we've had to replace them. We saw what the difference was between a well-functioning DBS unit with a good battery and one that was slowly needing help to, to be replaced. And I can tell you, I don't want Don to live without that DBS because I know his quality of life would be so much less. Yeah. And it has given us the opportunity to have and keep having wonderful memories and wonderful opportunities to still enjoy life on the days that he's able to enjoy it. And without that DBS, number one, I don't think he would be here any longer. And I know for a fact that some of our most wonderful memories that we shared in the last several years, we wouldn't have had those because he would have been at a much different place in this disease. I want to thank you both so much for, for talking with me today and, and doing this.